All right, ladies and gentlemen. So let's talk math again here. Um, what we're going to do is look at some of the uh, math that we used when we looked at genetics and evolution. Now, um, there will likely be some problems where you're going to be asked about probabilities. Now, when you're asked a probability problem, uh, I'm sure we're all used to doing the Punnett squares and that kind of good stuff. Uh, but um, what I'd like you to do is try and avoid that if possible, especially if you see uh, many genes involved. Uh, now, in this instance, if we say the parents are heterozygous, so bo both parents are heterozygous for all four genes, um, what you can do is look at uh, the probabilities of individual genes and then multiply them together. So, you know, if we have the genes of the parents and you set it up, you would recognize pretty quickly that about half the offspring will be heterozygous and a quarter will be uh, homozygous for each of the uh, other alleles or for each of the alleles. So what you can do is take uh, the parents, identify their probabilities, and then look at the offspring. They want to know what are the odds the kids are going to be heterozygous for the A gene. Well, if we look, that's half. Uh, the B gene, two dominant alleles, uh, one-fourth of the kids would have that. Two recessive alleles, uh, one-quarter of the kids, and should be a D there, I'm sorry. Uh, heterozygous for the D gene, uh, heterozygous kids. Again, since they're, oh geez, that's wrong too. Sorry. Uh, since the kids are uh, heterozygous for all these genes, again, the odds are about one half. Uh, so you get total odds of one in 64. So again, don't try and uh, figure these out with Punnett squares. Just multiply together the individual probabilities. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay, I'm sorry I had to pause that. Um, I've never paused anything before, so hopefully it is not too annoying uh, on your end. All right, um, when you ask a question about recombination frequency, this is looking at uh, the uh, frequency with which genes will be switched from chromosome to chromosome. Really easy to find that number. All you do is take the number of re recombinant offspring. Uh, again, this offspring with combinations of traits different from the parents, and divide that by the total number of offspring. So we saw that with Hunt Morgan's uh, fruit fly experiments. You take the wild type uh, and then the uh, doubly mutant fly, produce the hybrid offspring, and then uh, again uh, do the test cross uh, with another doubly uh, uh, mutant uh, fly. And uh, many of the offspring will have traits similar to those of the parents, but some will have combinations of traits uh, different from the parents. And the frequency of that uh, difference, again, gives indication of the relative distance between uh, the chromosomes. Uh, the higher the recombination frequency, the further apart uh, the genes on the chromosome, and the lower the recombination frequency, uh, the closer they are together. And that what helps us uh, create those linkage maps that we did last uh, winter. All right, um, we can use Hardy-Weinberg to look at what can occur under ideal uh, scenarios. You know, think of the stuff related to Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, a large population. Uh, random mating, no mutation, no immigration, no immigration, all that kind of stuff. And um, when you look at that idealized population, you know, ideal in a relative sense certainly, um, you can get a sense of uh, the frequency with which you should see certain uh, genotypes and phenotypes. All right, um, things to remember. You have these two equations. Uh, P and Q look at the frequency of the alleles, P being the dominant allele, Q being the recessive allele. Uh, P squared, looking at a homozygous dominant individual. Q squared is looking at homozygous recessive individual. And the 2PQ looks at heterozygous individuals. Remember, in a Punnett square, we'd have two heterozygous individuals, so we have to double that number. Okay? So heterozygotes, homozygous dominant, homozygous recessive. Now, the key in all of this, absolutely key, is to try and find Q. Q uh, unlocks all the other uh, variables. So if you find Q, then you can solve anything relatively easily. Let's use this as an example. Um, if we look here, okay, two alleles, big A, or A1, A2. Let's assume this is dominant, and this is recessive. It says 70% of the population has an A1. Well, we know right there that P equals 0.7. Uh, from that, we can figure out that Q equals 0.3. And they ask, what percentage of the population carries both A1 and A2? Well, A1, A2, that sounds like they're heterozygous, right? And the term for heterozygous individuals is 2PQ. So we take 2 times the 0.7 times the 0.3, these frequencies here, uh, and then that gives you uh, a frequency of 0.2 for heterozygous individuals. Again, the key is to find Q. Once you find Q, you just plug into the equations and you're off and running. OK. 
Okay, uh, last thing I want to mention is chi-square testing. What we can do is look at statistical probabilities. Um, when you collect data on uh, s frequencies of uh, certain characteristics, like certain traits, uh, what you'll do is take what you observed and subtract from that what you would expect uh, in the idealized population of uh, Hardy Weinberg. Then you sum together uh, all those uh, terms to come up with your chi-square value. Now, the important step here is to determine the degrees of freedom. Remember that the degrees of freedom is one less than uh, the number of categories. So when we did the uh, M&M activity, you know, if there are five different color M&Ms, that means the degrees of freedom would be four. And what you look for is this line of the .05. If your probability is less than .05, then it is statistically uh, significant. It's statistically likely that any differences between what you observe and what you'd expect are due to something other than chance. Uh, if your probability is greater than uh, 0.10, then uh, it's n the differences are not statistically significant. Chance may uh, play a role in a, a too high degree to feel confident uh, in your numbers. So uh, just you know, pay attention to uh, these chi-square values, pay attention to degrees of freedom, and look out for that 0.05 number. You look for something smaller, and you support your hypotheses. Remember, you don't prove anything. All you do is support. All right, uh, let's see, in our next segment here, it looks like we're going to take a look at, ooh, water potential. All right, thank you.